and as he rolls out on the stage, and you all clap for him. It seems like you probably have done a lot of the work for me. But, uh, you know, this is an assembly that we did not have on the calendar. Uh, this is the product of me and Wade talking over the past few months. If you had told Wade or me that we'd be here today in November uh, under these conditions, I don't think either one of us would have believed it. But I think that's why we're here today, is to hear Wade and have him talk about his experiences. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know Wade, that's 80 plus of you, you've seen him for the first time. I wonder if you're making some assumptions. Here we are gathered to hear from uh, one of our Kiski boys. You might be making some assumptions that we're here to talk to you or Wade is here to talk to you about his bad decision that he made about getting into the car with somebody he shouldn't have, about taking a risk that he shouldn't have. And here's another message, guys, it could be you. Be smart. But that's not the way this works. And I'm not gonna tell his story for him. But I, I, what I hope you'll hear is a story about the fragility of life, about what it's like to be vulnerable, about how quickly things can turn. I hope you take away, more than anything, perspective. As we sit here and happy Kiski, you go through your daily travels and you have adversity and setbacks, I hope you walk out of here with just a little bit of perspective. <clears throat> so, it's not about me. Wait, hope. You guys, everyone, right? Everybody, yeah. Well, um, I certainly never thought that I would be back here this soon. That's for sure. Uh, I left here six months ago. I was planning on coming back here in like a long time, a pretty long time. Um, but it feels good to be back in a familiar place. Um, and as Mr. Shapiro said, if this was not on the, the calendar, it wasn't planned. Um, and I also didn't make a dumb decision, although I've made a lot of dumb decisions, so I'm gonna endorse those because I guess you learn a lot from them. So don't be too safe, I guess. Um, but I was uh, a construction worker in Nevada as soon as I graduated high school. I uh, got a job out there in Lake Tahoe and uh, shortly moved out, moved out there and uh, just started my life. I was ready to go. I was really ready to get things rolling and uh, move on. Move on from Kiski, kind of uh, just get put as much distance between me and here in my familiar life as possible and just kind of, I was looking for an adventure. That's definitely what I found. I was living the dream for a while. I met a ton of great people, uh, moved in with some beautiful girls in Lake Tahoe as a 19 year old kid. That's like everybody's dream. Everyone's. Everyone in this room, maybe. I don't know what you think. Um, I, was, uh, I was working out there, I was ready to go to college, and um, one day I was being lifted up on a on a forklift that had a platform on it, and the operator forgot to tie the platform down. And then I, I fell, fell 18 or 20 feet, and then uh, the platform rolled over top of my back. I broke my back right in the middle. Um, was paralyzed pretty much instantly. Um, and I remember the whole thing, the entire thing. At first I thought I broke my legs. I said, okay, broke my legs, not a big deal. Then I reached around and felt my back, and there was like a, felt like there was like a, a baseball or a shot glass or something underneath my skin. And I was like, well, didn't break my legs. And it, was, it was on from there. And then uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I remember after that. I was like, flight into the hospital in Reno. It was uh, operated on. Uh, I, had to, I had to fuse my spine from maybe right about here to down here. It's just it's metal rods and screws holding it all together now. Uh, and from there, that's kind of like the, 
it feels like almost the first day of the rest of my life from there. It's kind of like where it all starts, because what happened, it's almost like what happened before that, <clears throat> everything that I did before then, going here, going to Lake Con, all the things that I did, especially the problems that I thought I had, all went away. You know, none of this, none of it matters at that point. All that matters is like, man, I could have died then. All the things that could have happened, right? Or could have not happened. Maybe that, maybe that wouldn't have happened at all. Maybe when I had gone, I would have gone to work. I would have gone home. I would have been just fine. I would have gone to college. I wouldn't be here, right? All the, you can play, I've played that game so much. Laying, I've spent a lot of time laying in a hospital bed, staring at the ceiling, asking myself, what if that wouldn't have happened? Or what if something worse would have happened? That doesn't, there's, only, there's only one what is, and that's that I'm in a wheelchair and I broke my back and I'm paralyzed. And that is, that sucks, it's terrible. But I can't do anything about it. I can't change it right now. I can't make my legs come back any faster than they already have. Which thank God I've made some pretty good progress. But I can't control that. It's done. And I guess what I mean by that is you, you guys can't control a lot of things here, where you're at right now. You have to wear a tie, you have to go to formal dinner, you have to be a waiter, you have to do all these things, right? You can't control them, but you can control what you do while you're being forced to do them, right? You have to go to the hospital every day and do therapy, right? I can control what the attitude I have, you know, that's like the most important thing ever. Even though I was here, that's what I remember is having to have a good attitude. Things are difficult. It's hard. Things are very hard. I don't think that anyone in here will disagree with the fact that life is, life can be pretty hard. But I think <coughs> what sets people apart is how well you can do hard things. If you can do hard things well, then you're, it'll work out. It'll be fine. And I think that a, a huge part of the way that I've gotten through this is that thinking about where I learned how to do hard things really well. That was here. That's like, you know, I know you guys had an open house today and it's funny, I didn't think about this until now, but you know, you probably told people that 85% of the graduates go to the top 2% of colleges in the United States, or something, maybe that's changed in the past six months, I don't know. Or 13% of the athletes here get Division one scholarships. Or whatever statistics we have, I know Esther Ellis tells everybody to say that when you're on a tour, right? I know that that's important. It's important that we have smart kids, good <coughs> athletes, and go to good schools at this school. But I would say that the most important statistic is that 100% of you guys can do hard things really, really well. That's like, that's the single most important thing ever because every other boarding school can have good athletes and smart kids, but how many of them can do hard things really well? I don't know. But you guys can do hard things really well. So, um, there's that. I had that written down in a speech, actually, and that was like the opening, so that's what I remember. And now, kind of flustered with emotion here, so it's difficult. I didn't really know what it was gonna be like um, sitting up here, but it feels good to be here. It feels sometimes being out in the world, and a new, it's a new world for me in a wheelchair. I, I see things differently. I'm at literally a lower level. Um, it's hard to feel comfortable. Get nervous, get anxious, people try and help me. People try and push me all the time. It's like, my arms aren't broken, you know? Like, I can push myself. Um, but it's interesting how things like that change. Things change so fast. Um, I was, six months ago, I was you guys, right? Six months from now, I could be something totally different. I don't even have an idea of what that looks like. You guys probably have more of an idea than I do. And it's crazy how things change so fast. And it's like, uh, I almost have like whiplash on it still. Like going 100 miles an hour and stopping in one second, your eyes pop out. It's crazy, it takes your breath away. And that's, it, it's so important that you enjoy, I guess you could, might think that it's important to say, enjoy what you're doing in the moment and be happy and do what feels good now. But I mean, that's so kind of all, it's like noise, it all goes away. Once something like this happens to you, it all goes away. And once you're, demand, once you're cut down at the knees, literally, once life hits you with such a crippling blow, none of that really, it all went away. And my time in Lake Tahoe, it didn't really matter. None of that, after this happened to me, I was like, man, you know, that, that was all good and everything, but I have to figure out what to do next. 